Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another fun edition of Music with Mr. Munt. <laughs> now, I have the ukulele out because the students in fifth and fourth grade had been working on songwriting with the ukuleles. And um, all of you younger students out there, you really can look forward to when you get to fourth and fifth grade, you'll be learning to play the ukulele. And um, what I'd like to do today is called Let's Make a Hit. So the fifth graders wrote songs, they just got started, and we recorded them. And the thing that's really important to understand is when we hear a song, like one of our favorite songs on the radio, it's important to remember that that song did not start out all polished and wonderful like you heard it on the radio. For example, um, when John Denver wrote the song Country Roads, Country roads take me home to the place I belong. Um, when he first pulled out his guitar, it, he probably started strumming it and came up with some ideas and wrote them down, but it didn't all come together perfectly that first time. He got the idea and then he kept working on it and that's what songwriters do and what musicians do. Just like if you're writing an essay or a story, uh, you write your rough draft and then you look it over and you think, how can I make this better? And you keep working on it. Um, Beethoven did that over and over again, draft after draft, throw it away, do it again. And you've heard us talk about growth mindset and mistakes are a way to get into a new territory and learn from it. And maybe your mistake turns into something unexpectedly wonderful. So what I want to do is I want to take one of the songs that students wrote in fifth grade, and I'm not going to use any names of students um, because I want to respect their privacy, but this song is called Gold Rush. And I wore my Johnny Cash t-shirt for this one because it kind of reminds me of a country and western song. And let's see what we can do with it. Let's have fun. So here we go. Now the first thing I'd like to do is just play the song as we recorded it in music class. And a lot of times when students hear their rough draft of a song, they cover their ears and they cringe and they think it's really bad or hopefully they don't think it's really bad you should be very proud of yourselves because do you have you ever heard the term a diamond in the rough a lot of these songs that you started are little diamonds but when they go mining for diamonds when you pull it out it doesn't look like a polished diamond, like the finished product. It looks like a stone with dirt all over it. And you've got to polish it and work it and bring it out to make it shine like a diamond. So we're going to take a listen to Gold Rush in its original rough draft, and then let's pick it apart and see some ways of turning it into a hit. Trying to get to Cali for the river I'm trying. I want the 
the sum of the wealth, stacking money on my shelf. Gold rush! Gold rush! Gold rush! In a deep dark mine, I was signing a waiver, trying to get just a little bit braver. Gold rush! Gold rush! Gold rush! I was able to afford what I was needing. I just hope I don't get greedy. Gold rush! Gold rush! Gold rush! And now I'm going to jump ahead for a moment and play just a little bit of what this song sounds like after working it in the studio and polishing that diamond. So the first thing that strikes me about this song the lyrics are amazing. Um, they're also historically pointing towards the gold rush in America that happened in the 1840s. You've heard of the 49ers, the um, sports team. Well, that comes from 1849 when the great gold rush happened in America and people rushed to California to try to make it rich. And just like the lyrics suggest they often left the, um, their family and traveled to California in hopes of coming back home with lots of gold. So I know you only heard the song once, but listen to these lyrics. They are also um, very grammatically correct to that time period. Trying to get to Cala for the river runs dry. Now, they, they didn't say, I'm trying to get to California before the river runs dry. That wouldn't work for a song like this. Back um, in that time, you would speak more like trying to get to Cal, California. But look at how clever that is. Instead of saying, trying to get to California, they used Cal, a uh, for the river runs dry. So California is being used in two ways. First, the Cal in the beginning, but then before the river runs dry is a uh, for the river runs dry. Cala for the river runs dry. That's just genius. Trying to get to Cala for the river runs dry. After this ride, we'll be living high. My family waiting for me down in New Orleans. We talked about how you'd leave your family. Could only afford a bag of beans. So instead of saying we were really poor, you're giving a example of like, all I could afford was a bag of beans. So you're hungry and you've got nothing. I was poor as could be holding up a family of four, another detail, before I hit the river of gold. I'd like some of the wealth stacking money on my shelf. And then the story continues. In a deep dark mine, I was signing a waiver, trying to get just a little bit braver. Because if you did strike gold, you had to kind of keep it quiet because thieves could come and take it. So he's kind of like hiding out in the mine, trying to like see what to do to get brave. Cause you have to be brave to get out of there with gold and not get somebody after you. I was able to afford what I was needing. I just hope I don't get greedy. So that, um, just a wonderful lyric. So the next thing we need to do is take the song and, oh, by the way, you could hear the whip that I also want to say the gold rush and then the whip cracking also adds to the flavor of the song amazingly.
And um, it's a great refrain. A refrain is a part that repeats and um, sort of acts like the chorus section of the song. So the next thing we want to do is find generally what the tempo of the song is. So um, if I think back to the song, it's kind of like, trying to get to California, the river runs dry. So I'm trying to look for that beat. Gold rush, crack, gold rush. So what I'm gonna do is get a metronome. And in the olden days, they used to have a pendulum that would go click, click, click. But the new ones have batteries. And what they do is give beats per minute. So, um, if you had it really slow, like this is what 40 beats per minute would sound like. And we know it's not that slow. And in 60 seconds, in one minute, there would be 40 of those clicks. If it was 200, I could turn it up to 200 beats per minute. And it would sound like that. And we know it doesn't go that fast. I'm get to come from a river on that. No, it doesn't work. So I found, I think right about here, this is 80 beats per minute. Trying to get to California, the river runs dry. Gold rush, gold rush. That's about where that tempo is, okay? So um, we're gonna set that on our Pro Tools recording software the tempo at 80, and then what I'm gonna do is make a duplicate copy of the original, and then I'm gonna start cutting it up and making it fit into that general tempo because when you just take your ukuleles and start singing, sometimes you slow down a little bit, sometimes you speed up, but if you're gonna be in a studio playing with like other musicians, you wanna be everybody's agreeing to a certain tempo. But luckily, because I can cut and move things apart in time on Pro Tools, we can kind of lay it all out on 80 beats per minute. And then we can add drums and bass and guitar and other fun things. So let's see what we can do with this hit, Gold Rush. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut and snip each um, one of these phrases. So if you listen, the singer is going to sing um, the first line of the song. Try to get to California, the river runs dry. Okay. Try to get to California, the river runs dry. And he stops right there. So I'm going to stretch that out even more. And... I want to make a snip right before this line right here is gold rush. So I want to cut it off there. And then if I press play, it should just be gold rush. Gold rush. Yep, gold rush. And so I'm going to go through the whole piece and just make those snips between lines so that when we put drums behind it, we can slide things forward or backwards to be set with the time. So I'm just going to pause the video and do all that because it would take a while and I don't want to bore you with that. So I'll be right back. All right, so now that I've made those separations, I'm going to import a drummer playing at 80 beats per minute, here it comes, and I'm going to say OK, that's creating a new track. I'll spread this out so you can see it. And you can see the drum beat there. And here's the song being sung. Now it's not going to line up yet because the timing is off. So if I played it together, it would sound like this. So you can 
See, that drum beat's going to work nicely, but it just needs to be adjusted. Now, most songs have an introduction before the singing starts. So what I'm going to do in a moment is drag all of this over so we get just some drums playing in the beginning and maybe um, I'll put four measures of drums before the singing starts so we can get put guitar and bass playing in there which you'll see later and it gets the listeners ear ready for the singing so I'm just gonna pause the video and set that up so that you can hear it all right so I'm halfway through lining it up and it's been a while but I just want to play it for you so you can think about how it's starting to come together. So here we have it, drums, and this will be where the introduction, imagine guitar and bass playing along, and then it starts up. stop right there for a second notice we just heard the gold rush that's going to be 18 times right there maybe that's too many I'm thinking and the storyline kind of gets harder to understand when you have only one line of vocals like trying to get to California for I get however it goes but then gold rush, gold rush, gold rush, then the next line. Maybe if we bunched two of those together and then did gold rush two times, then you'd hear more of the story and instead of 18 times hearing gold rush, we'd hear it six times up to this point, which um, I think we should put that together and see how it sounds because I just think it's too repetitive now. So pause and I'll work that out. All right, so that didn't take long. Now listen to it. So there's going to be two um, lyrical lines. Lyrics are the words and then the gold rush two times and then two and two and two and two. So see if you like this better. Much better. I think it's hearing it 18 times is just too much. So that was only six. So now I'm going to just continue on and um, I may leave a space somewhere toward the end where there could be like a little guitar solo. Maybe once he discovers gold, then that's a good place for like a guitar solo to be screaming out and then it finishes the song with the last verse after he's rich. All right, so I'll see you in a minute. All right, so I think you can see it now. 
We've got room here for an introduction to add some guitar and bass to this. This is the drums. And then the singing happens. I'll call that verse one, refrain, verse two, refrain, verse three, refrain, verse four. And then this little gap will be for a guitar solo. And because that's where he makes it rich. And then the last two verses and it ends with a refrain. And listen to how the drums um, finish where he says, um, I hope I don't get greedy. Listen. And I thought it would be nice to end with the gold rush and we could maybe even put some echo on the end to make it sound really cool. So I am going to set to work on putting a bass and guitar, rhythm guitar, and figure out some nice chords that are going to go along with what they're singing. I'll be right back. So, I've worked out the guitar for this song, and for this song it definitely begs for Penny. This is my guitar named Penny. It's kind of colored that way. But this is a Fender Telecaster, and in my opinion it's the greatest guitar on earth. And what I'm going to do is play an A minor chord, kind of like this, with a little crunch to it. It gives you that real feeling of like riding the trail and gold mine, right? And then when Charlie starts to sing the Gold Rush. I'm going to go to a D minor chord. And then resolve back to the A minor by hitting an F chord. And then an E seventh. And a B back. And then that'll make for some really nice, um, fun things to solo on. So I'll just play a little bit of that track so you can hear the bass and drums and the vocals together and then we'll add a bass line. bass has thicker strings than a guitar, right? Um, I don't know if you can see, but um, this thickest string is not quite as thick as a pencil, but it's thick. And um, bigger things make lower sounds because they vibrate slower. Think, if, some, if something's bigger, it can't move as fast. Remember, all sound is vibration. So when I play a bass, see if you can hear this, it makes a really low sound. So I'm going to play along with the drums and I kind of want to do a groove like... Watch this. So I'm going to record this as I play along with the drums. Switch. All right, we're almost done. Now I'm going to take Penny back and I'm going to put on that intro on the guitar and that lead section that will be in the middle. So um, I'm going to play a little intro right now for this. Here we go. All right, so now 
we got an intro. Now I'm going to go and do a solo in the middle section. What I'd like to do is on that crack sound and gold rush, we're going to add some more echo. And at the end where Charlie goes, gold rush, maybe we can make it echo and fade out. All right, so let's do that and then we'll listen to the whole thing. So I'm finding that I can't get a great whip sound, like this is what I get. <laughs> It's okay, but I want a real cracking whip. So I found a whipping sound effect on YouTube and I just downloaded it. And now I'm going to import those whipping sounds. So you can see this is the whipping sound effect that I got off YouTube. And then when I line it up with the whip that Charlie's cracking, it sounds really awesome watch i'll play this one and then here's just the whip that we recorded you could hear how the second one didn't quite have as much okay so the last thing we're going to do is what's called mix the um piece over here we have the vocal track, the whip sound, um, the whip sound effect, the bass, the rhythm guitar, lead guitar, drums, and this one's called the master. And this whole thing, this is called a master meter, and it's just going to make sure that we don't overload the speakers. Like if these levels get too high, then it starts to break up and not sound good. So generally when I'm mixing, I like to start with the drums, so I just turn it on. And you can hear the drums, and you see over here, we don't, we're not way up here, so that's a good place to start. And then I'm gonna add the bass, so I'm gonna turn the bass on right here. And because I play bass, I love to have bass. And that sounds pretty good grooving with the drums, right? So next, we're going to do the rhythm guitar. Too loud, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. That sounds pretty good, right? Let's listen to the lead vocal, see how that's coming out. Okay, we can see that whip created all this um, these red lights and everything. So I'm gonna fix that and get right back to you. All right, so it's all mixed and right now I am just bouncing it to the computer as an MP3 file so that we can play it. And then maybe I'll turn it into a music video with some pictures of the um, 1849 Gold Rush. That would be pretty cool. All right. So before we stop and listen and watch the music video of it, just think back to the beginning how everybody had maybe two classes to really compose a song on the ukulele. And sometimes the ideas we come up with, we think, oh, this is silly, this won't. Look what happens when you work on a piece. There's beautiful things going on in all of your songs and it just takes the um, time to pull it out and fix it and arrange it the way you want and that's really how the songs that we hear on the radio 
they started just like this. Somebody sitting down with a guitar or a ukulele or a piano or any instrument and they start to get an idea and they work it, work it, work it until they get it where they want it. So, let's listen. <laughs> 